Hello, this is Alex, welcome to Boomstick Gaming, and I really need to talk about Days Gone. Why now in 2020? Well, I want to get into that because I have a lot to say about how the game has changed over the last year, as well as how it really won me over after I returned to it recently. If you have yet to give it a try, didn't manage to finish it, or you thoroughly enjoyed it already at launch, that's great to hear, but maybe I can shed some more insight into what has changed since then. Also, when it really comes down to why I made this video, I just naturally enjoy talking about good video games as well, so let's dive into one. In 2019, I didn't cover Days Gone on the channel when it first released, although I was there on launch day playing it. I only got to around the 8 hour mark or so at the time, which actually isn't very far into this, and then ended up simply putting the game down because I had quite a few other big projects going on at the time that were keeping me pretty busy, but also I knew if I just left this one on the video game back burner for just a bit, I knew it would get cooked a little more throughout the year, and when I returned, it should then be the game at its full potential, or at least improved in some ways. Now, Days Gone has received its last main update a couple months back, and it has vastly improved and expanded the game since launch. It has patched in all kinds of new things like harder difficulty settings, new game plus, a surprisingly awesome challenge mode, better controls, dead zone tweaks, and even gyro aim. Which isn't really my kind of thing, perhaps if you're a pro Splatoon player on the side you might get more out of this, but I do respect Ben's studio for adding in such a niche feature not usually seen in most AAA games, let alone any games for that matter. Also, the game's performance has improved as well, and you can tell tons of bugs have been squashed, making it feel quite a bit more polished overall, and the frame rate is now much more consistent, making the 30fps cap feel a little more tolerable once you get used to it. Now let's finally enter the very start of 2020, where I start the game from the very beginning for the first time since I briefly touched it at launch, and I'm here to now report that this is one of my favorite open world shooters of the last few years. I would now even go as far as classifying it as being worthy of landing somewhere in the top 10 of PlayStation 4 exclusives, and I'm going to break down all the elements that I found to make this true. I want to do a little PSA here before moving on. If you're a fairly experienced gamer and you're picking up Days Gone, I highly recommend bumping up that difficulty setting anywhere above normal because it really helps the core gameplay and progression overall. Headshots become a great importance on the higher difficulty settings, and since you'll be doing quite a lot of the same repeat tasks like taking down enemy encampments, burning down freaker nests, and taking on hordes, with this added challenge requiring you to play more cautiously and tactical, this really helps to make what would be tasks that might start feeling somewhat like you're going through the motions at some point into satisfying intense combat scenarios from the beginning to the end of the game. Something you may not really consider when you think about Days Gone is that it's actually just as much of a stealth game as it is a straight on action game. Ripping out a filter from a wrecked vehicle to use as a temporary silencer, for example, can fundamentally change how you tackle a situation, and there's also a good amount of different tools to play around with to manipulate the enemy AI. The horde battles are definitely the standout feature, setting Days Gone apart from similar open world games, and I like that they can never really be haphazardly taken on. Pre-planning out the way you're going to route freakers, utilize choke points, set up traps, and escape to safety all must be done before you even stand a chance. These are my favorite moments for good reason. As far as the game's world and your cool customizable bike you'll use to navigate it, I found the general traversal to be quite relaxing in a way, and I appreciate when open world games are not trying to distract you with gameplay candy every 15 seconds. There are things to do and find off the beaten path between main missions for sure, but they are sprinkled out in a more reserved fashion to not have so many of them to where they all start to blur into the same undynamic dynamic events. Although I stated I quite enjoy the relaxing nature of just cruising around on your bike, still constant radio chatter is still somewhat of an issue, and if a sequel ever does get made to Days Gone, which I hope it does, I would like to see the travel banter reduced to at least half because I was plenty fine with the story just being told through the central cutscenes. I found that the main character Deacon really grew on me throughout the story, and although his attitude might be divisive for some people, I appreciate just how generally grumpy he is, because honestly, that is more in line with how people would actually act if they were stuck in the post-apocalypse instead of turning them all into wacky goofballs. 
As someone who is a pretty neutral gray personality in real life in most regards, I really enjoyed the somewhat relatable characterization and acting of Deacon St. John. Now, before closing this all out, I want to dedicate this entire next section to the added in challenge mode because I don't usually gravitate to these in most games, but here in Days Gone, they really went above and beyond with this new arcade mode. The challenge mode that has been expanded throughout the last year has a variety of different scenarios like surviving hordes, racing and performing stunts, taking down enemy camps, among a few others. What sets this all apart though is its really well done score based progression system that has upgrades, currency and leaderboards all to itself that makes this all the perfect diversion from the main campaign. Going through the story mode feels somewhat slower and methodical with more survival style mechanics where everything in challenge mode turns days gone into a full on arcade action game which is a great change of pace. Like I said, I'm usually not too into these challenge modes that often just feel like more of the same thing you were doing already in the main campaign, but I appreciate that this mode just gives you the keys to the entire toy store and lets you relish in its strange chaotic fun. One map for example has you scrambling for currency to unlock guns from walls, and a mystery box, you know exactly what this is imitating, and another has you pretty much playing the gritty reboot of Crazy Taxi we never got. Every single new feature that I've mentioned throughout this video was all added entirely for free through patches during 2019, and a big hats off again to Ben Studios for sticking with this project because it really all came together quite nicely in the end. Days Gone will most likely stay sitting at its 71% on Metacritic and OpenCritic for all time just because of how our aggregate scoring systems work, even though that first month version of the game that was critiqued is no longer reflective of the experience that new players will have from here on out if they purchase it now in its finalized state. Although I am 100% guilty of the following concept as well, however I am trying to rectify it with this very video, the majority of video game reviewers don't often update their scores to reflect the current state of these games which makes sense simply from a realistic workload standpoint. There are just so many games constantly flooding out that trying to stay up to date on the entirety of the gaming zeitgeist is more difficult than you might assume, but the games themselves don't care and are constantly evolving regardless. To quickly get to my point, I hope by doing this somewhat informative video on the state of the game now, it then becomes a valuable resource for anyone picking up Days Gone in 2020 and into the years to come. I was going to close this all out by talking about what I would like to see in a possible full on sequel to Days Gone, but those pure speculation style opinion pieces are not really too enjoyable to me, so instead I want to mention how absurd it is that this game feels like two entire games worth of campaigns already crammed into one. Just when you feel like the story is starting to wrap up its first main through line, which is plenty enjoyable in its own right, the game says nope, here's an entire new map, new primary objective, new enemies, new upgrades, and honestly the second half of the game is where everything is really firing on all cylinders. I will always herald games that come out with what feels like more content than what was even required, as opposed to the ones that come out feeling like they aimed for the absolute bare minimum to qualify as a video game. Overall, if you have not played Days Gone before or haven't played since launch, I highly recommend you reconsider the state of the game now, give it some time to let yourself find the groove with it because it's kind of a slow burn, and come back to this video to tell me what you thought. If you happen to be someone who greatly enjoyed your entire playthrough when this launched, awesome, I'm glad to hear about that too, let me know. And with that my friends, that was Days Gone. If you like the style of content I do here at Boomstick Gaming, consider subscribing to the channel for more, ringing that little bell icon if you already are, and you can also find me on Twitter at BoomstickAlex. Lastly, a big shout out to the top YouTube members and patrons you have been seeing in the bottom left corner of the screen because they, along with everyone else who supports me, go a long way in helping to perpetuate the future of this individually owned and operated channel. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching.